it's Carrie from Stretch Sheet. I'm having a hard time today with um, with all of this nonsense. This um, live streaming is a little tricky. I don't even know if my mic is working. So um, hopefully it is. If anybody is watching online, please let me know if you can hear me or not. Um, I think I tried a new streaming software and I don't know if it's working. So <laughs> fingers crossed, <laughs> fingers crossed. It says that I have a good connection and here I am on the, on the internet. So um, let's hope for the best. Okay. Uh, like I said before, if you guys can't hear me, let me know right away. Oh, if you can't hear me, you probably won't be able to let me know. So let's try, let's try this. I just unplugged the mic. If you can't hear me, let me know right away. Okay. Um, so basically friends, today is a day of technology. I am determined, like very determined to get this live streaming all smooth and ready by February. So for those of you who are actually watching, I'm so grateful because, um, I know that this is a little, a little bit of a challenge, but if I can get this like really laid out over the next week or two, I'll feel really good. So, um, just give me a shout out if you're here. I just want to see, um, I just want to see if this is all working. Now, I had a request from one of my clients to do a class today, a suggestion uh, to do a class on sitting in lotus pose. So that's what we're going to do this morning is work on that. And if you guys have any questions about your pain, about your body, about anything else that's going on in your world, um, stretching related, let me know. Okay. All right. Now let's see. Let me get rid of that because we don't need all these things that I thought were going to be so cool, but aren't. And now I am using my basic computer again. You guys, I've got it all set up. I'm not lying. I have so that it streams everywhere. So it uses my phone as a camera. I've got the microphones. I've got everything, but it's so many components and pieces and parts that uh, it, just, it didn't line up. So, um, so, so I'm late. So anyway, I apologize. Let's Go ahead into a seated position like this. Now, chances are, if you're having lotus pose issues, like if, if you're here because you want to learn how to do lotus pose, then just sitting in this position is probably not attainable for you, right? So what you do is instead of sitting with your feet close in like this, because you're going to feel like this, and you're probably holding yourself up, like trying not to fall over, right? What you do is you bring your legs really far away. Okay, so that you can sit up straight. All right, so you would start kind of like just sitting up in this position with your legs straight and then turn your knees open and then notice that your back is straight and just find the place where you can bring your feet in to a place that feels good, even if it's like way out here, that's okay. Now, if you can't sit in this position at all with your knees open like this, I'm not saying you don't have to do it this way because that's going to engage your hamstrings and your hamstrings might be too tight for you to sit up with like a 90 degree back like this. But with your legs bent out like this, with your knees open in this position, you may notice that you can sit upright. And if that's the case, then go for it. Oh, I do have a chat, I think. Okay, cool. We're all good. Uh, so from this position, what you do is you bring your knees to your, or your hands to your knees, and you're just going to squeeze in for strength and open up for stretch. Okay. And you can do that about like six or seven times. But when you do this, I want you to think about what you're feeling. So uh, do you feel a stretch in your inner thighs or does it feel like you just hit a wall? Right? That would be important to know. Do you feel like it's in the back of your legs here or like pinching right in here? You know, do you feel it like on the outside here? Do you feel your glutes? What do you notice? Or do you feel nothing at all? What does that feel like? Now, those of you who are like, I still can't do this, Carrie, that I have a different variation for you. So what you do is you get up close to the wall and just lay on your back. And then you bring your feet to the wall like this. And what this does is it changes the angle of your hips. So instead of being like you're 
your hips on the ground and your feet on the ground, they're in a different plane of motion. And that gives you a little bit of an easier, uh, an easier rotation in your hips, a little bit easier way to do it. I'll show you on this wall so that you can see what my feet are doing. So I'm in this position, but notice that my, my hips are far away from the wall. And you could be even further if you need to. Okay, so you just go back and forth just like this. Not too bad, right? All right, now, what's cool about this is that oftentimes not being able to stretch in that butterfly position is caused by some sort of barrier in the back of your legs. So if you're open, trying to open up this way and you feel that back here, that's not a good stretch. What you should feel is the stretch in the inner thighs here. If you feel the stretch in the back of your hips, then you have a, a blockage. And basically what's happened is that your muscles work like a pulley system. So as the muscles in the front here are getting longer, the muscles in the back are shortening. But if the muscles here in the back are unable to shorten properly, then what ends up happening is they cramp, right? They cramp up and they create a barrier. They kind of block, they lock, right? So it's kind of cool because <clears throat> Excuse me. The um, the way that muscles work is very much like an accordion or like an elastic, right? And you can stretch it, but then when you let go, it goes back to kind of a resting place, and then it can kind of shorten a little bit more. So especially like an accordion, you can stretch on an accordion, but you can only push it closed so far. You can't close it all the way, right? It just it folds up to a certain point. And then it can stretch to a certain point without tearing. And then it can fold to a certain point. But it, after that point, like everything's folded up on itself. And if it can't continue, like if it, it it's like run into itself. It, it can't go anywhere else, right? So that muscle in the back is acting like that folding accordion, while the muscles in the front are acting like the stretching accordion. They're happening at the same time, which is pretty cool. But if you have some sort of inflexibility in the back here, then when you go to fold it, it would be like having a, like a damaged accordion. And you're trying to close it, but there's one spot that won't fold properly. And so it gets stuck early. It doesn't close all the way. So what we're gonna do is resist and stretch the back of your legs here so that you can fold all the way, all right? So what we're gonna do is lay on our backs. I think probably we're gonna need a strap for this one. Let me grab one. You just need a, a rope, probably. You can use a yoga strap. You could also use a belt or a towel for this. It's totally fine. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. And we're going to do a straight leg. We <laughs> just know on a, I have a, a cushions in here to make this sound a little better so it's not so live, but the cats sit on them. So <laughs> there's a cat girl over my pants. So I apologize if you could see that. So what you're gonna do is take that towel or that rope and wrap it around your foot. Keep your legs straight like this and kick all the way to the floor, but like off your mat. So it's a little bit of a diagonal. And then you pull up diagonally. This is my right leg. So I'm gonna pull over my left side, my left shoulder. And then I'm gonna kick right back down. Now you might be tight here. So it might be just a small range of motion, but I've got the rope wrapped around my right foot and I'm holding it in my left hand. Now this is resistance stretching. And I'm assuming if you're watching me live, you probably have done some of my videos before and understand how resistance stretching works. But if you haven't, I'm pushing my foot towards the ground all the time. And my arm is giving me a fight. My arm is trying to pull up all the time. So there's resistance in the stretch. And you just go back and forth. You always move and you always resist. You kind of go in and out of the stretch, just like if you were loosening up a rubber band, okay? But you always want that tension in there, just like a rubber band always has tension too, right? Rubber band doesn't just let go, <laughs> does it? All right, so now let's subside. So take your left foot and put the rope around your, around your foot, like the arch of your foot, and hold the rope in your right hand. And then you're gonna push down to the left side of your mat. So it's, I'm actually pushing diagonally off my mat and then I'm gonna pull up over the right shoulder. And I'm just gonna go back and forth just like that. 
And again, I'm resisting all the time. So I'm trying to push my heel down to the floor and I'm pulling up with my arm. And it's a back and forth motion. And you know, five or six of them is usually fine. You could do up to 10. You don't really need to do many more than that. And then as far as resistance goes, there should be tension, but not so much that you're like really straining, you know, like it, this shouldn't be hard for you. And you shouldn't feel like you're engaging your entire body to do it. You should just feel like there's effort, you know? And then a good stretch on the back of your hamstring, right? And your leg, hopefully. All right. Okay, and now we'll go back and try our groin stretch again. So first, have a seat and see if you feel a little better sitting upright with your knees open like this. Like, can you find that seated position? If not, go ahead to the wall and try it there again, okay? If you can, find your feet in the place that feels the best to you, all right? And then we're just gonna put our elbows on our knees, squeeze in for strength, and open up for stretch. I'm using my arms to push me open, but I'm still resisting um, with my legs, if my legs are trying to stay up. I'm just going back and forth. So if you're tight in this position, you may just go a little bit like this, and that's okay. Now I want you to take note of what you're feeling. So this is the cool thing about resistance stretching. We've just changed something, right? Our body's just changed because we did that other stretch. So now the accordion in the back here should be shortening more which gives you a little bit more range of motion, most likely, and may expose another issue. So what are you feeling? Do you feel the stretch in your inner thighs now, here? Do you feel some pinch on the outside here? What do you got? Or is it still kind of locking up in the back? There may be some issues to work through, right? I love exploring this way because how often do you really listen to your body? Like really listen. You know, not very often, most likely. A lot of times we just go through the motions and we don't really listen to what's happening. So hopefully you've got a little bit more range of motion here. Now there's one other piece. Our bodies will create compensation patterns, especially if we've had an injury or some sort of issue somewhere else. So a compensation pattern is basically your body's plan B. Like if, if plan A is everything being in balance and working properly, then that's all your muscles working efficiently, right? If for some reason you get an injury or uh, you're tired or you worked out too much or you know something happened, then these muscles in your inner thighs might shut down for a bit. And when that happens, your body goes to plan B, which is, well, better figure out some other way of doing this movement because this muscle is not going to work. It always has a backup plan. And that's what's so cool about our bodies is that there's always, always another way to do a certain movement. Like this is fascinating to me that like if your body forgets how to do one movement or like it's an injury or something, you have in every single movement that we do, you have another way of compensating, another way to do it. It's a survival mechanism and it's so cool, except when it's not. So, <laughs> like in this case, um, it would not be cool to have a compensation pattern because like you actually want to use those muscles in your inner thighs. But for some reason, you've, you've shut that down subconsciously and your body subconsciously has chosen to use a different muscle group. And, um, and it's really hard to turn that back on unless you have the right tool. So resistance stretching gives you that tool. For some reason, I don't know why it creates neuromuscular connections. I don't claim to understand how the brain works, right? But it's pretty fascinating. And I've seen it millions of times. Well, not millions. I've seen it hundreds of times. So for sure uh, that this, that we can turn those, um, turn the right muscles back on, turn those compensation patterns off. It's so cool. And it totally changes the way you use your body. So you go from using your body with the plan B in a very inefficient way to using your body in a very efficient way with plan A, right? Well, that's what we want. We want to be plan A, right? So let's stretch out this part of our body right here. And this is the quads, but we're going to get like really high up in the quads because we want that feeling of that external rotation. So let me show you real quick. If you're doing this to pull up with your groin stretch with this muscle here, pull it here. What the quads do is they bring you up this way using the muscles on the outside. 
you see? So it looks the same. The difference is that one goes like this and one goes like this. <laughs> but they get you to the same place, right? They're totally different movements. And that's why it can be really inefficient if you're using your quads to do this because it's just not what it's meant to do. So what you'll do is lay on your back. I like to be up on my shoulders, but you don't have to. Bring your right leg off your mat and then hook your knee on top of your right leg. So I've got, let me say that again. Hook your left leg on top of your right knee. Then you're gonna raise this like you're pulling both apart. Pull down for strength and then up for stretch. And we're just gonna go up and down just like that. So I'm pushing up with my right leg and I'm pulling with my left leg towards the bottom of the mat. Like I'm trying to pull it down this way actually. So there's a lengthening process to it. And I'm also not allowing myself to roll over. Okay, I want that really good resistance and a really good stable hip structure, right? So I don't want to roll. This isn't a stretch for my back, it's a stretch for my hip. So just going back and forth just like that. And what this is doing is reinforcing to my quads what its job is and which direction it goes, okay? It's pretty cool. And then we'll switch sides. So bring your left leg off your mat and your right leg will hook over and grab your knee. So I've got my foot on my knee and I'm gonna resist in opposite directions and just pull down towards the mat. So up for strength. And then I use my right leg to pull my knee down towards the mat but also lengthen. So I'm trying to bring it as far to the edge, to the bottom of my mat, like way down here, if I can, so I can get that distance. So down and up. And just going back and forth, just like that. So again, my friends, I, pro I promise I'm gonna figure this out. So I know that the camera quality is not great. I know that the audio quality is not great today, but I'm gonna get it. I'm determined by February, that's the goal. So, you know, stay tuned. But I thank you guys so much, you guys who are like my loyal subscribers, like the people who are really here, like I so much appreciate you. If you're not a subscriber of my channel yet, make sure that if you're on Facebook that you sign up for the Facebook page. <clears throat> if you're on YouTube, you just click that little box in the corner and you can subscribe there. And then click the bell icon too, because that will tell you when I go live again. <laughs> if you're a subscriber already, you probably would have gotten notifications last night when I was trying to figure out this software and it worked then, but <laughs> I didn't know it was working. So here we are back at our groin stretch. And now we've turned off those quads in this movement so that we can get a better stretch in the inner thighs. So go ahead and try this stretch out. Now, again, if you are really tight and you're like, I can't even sit upright, then bring your legs forward, let your knees open up and find a place where you're upright, okay? So I want you to feel like you're here. If you cannot, if you're like this, you feel like you're gonna fall over, then you go to the wall and you do the same thing at the wall, okay? So you're gonna bring your legs in as close as you can, make sure that your torso feels upright like you're sitting on your sit bones, put your elbows on your knees, squeeze in for strength, and then push open for your stretch. If it feels good, you can grab your ankles and lean forward into that stretch too, okay? Just if it feels good. Oh, we're gonna get a cameo, I think. Hey, Bobby. It's Sari. Can you hear her with her little finger, her little nails on the thing? Come here, Bobby. Come on, come say hi. Hey, yeah, hi, Bubba. There you go, Sari's butt. Hi, Sari's butt. Say hi to your friends. She is all over every video. I have to apologize for the, I am not apologizing. I'm a cat lady, I admit. There are little mascots. So hopefully you're feeling different. And if you are watching this after the fact, or if you're like, now go ahead and let me know in the chat what you're feeling. And if you notice something different in your inner thighs, you should feel a stretch there now, hopefully. And if you don't, it could be that there are more barriers that we need to work through. And um, if that's the case, you might really like, I have an online course called Stretch G101. Uh, I think that's listed down in the description below, so you can check that out. Uh, it's all over everything, so if you can't find it, you know, or just reach out to me, I'll send you the link. Uh, it's really great. It starts you off from the very beginning, like, assuming that you can't do anything. Like, <laughs> assuming, I mean, you could start Stretch G101, like, with a cane 
or like, you know, it's, it's very simple. You do get up and down off the floor a little bit. So you, you know, but it's very, very easy and it just builds you up bit by bit. So every week it just gets a little bit harder, but not so hard that you don't, that you even recognize that it's hard. I actually, I'm, I've been a piano teacher for 20 some years, close to 30 years now. Um, and when I teach piano, piano movement is the same as um, a stretching, basically. I mean, it's just, all of this is the same business model. It's just me sharing what I know about how to move my body with you guys, right? So, um, so I thought about it a lot. And I was like, exercise videos all over the place are just like, here, do this, right? And sometimes they're really hard. Like sometimes they are really hard. Sometimes you are not ready for that at all. So what Stretch She 101 does is it basically starts you from the place where it, it just assumes that you are like sitting on the couch all day, right? That you have injuries, that you feel uncomfortable, that your body hurts. It assumes that, like I assume that in the class. And so then what happens is each week we just add on one little extra thing. Just like when I teach piano lessons, like you learn a song and then the next song just adds one more skill and it incorporates that into what you already know. And then the next week you add another skill and you incorporate that into what you already know. And so there's constant review, but just every week adding one more little extra thing. So that's Stretch G 101, which is so great. If you are already comfortable with uh, resistance stretching, then Stretch G 201 is really great because that's all problem solving. In Stretch G 301, I take yoga poses and like go crazy with the yoga pose. We go with like something nuts. Like this week, I filmed Garland pose, which is like, this which ooh, here yeah on my feet which is like kind of like this lotus pose that we're doing so i problem solve through the whole thing and then we end up doing the pose and it's awesome so there's all that fun stuff that you can be doing anyway beside the point so we've done that growing stretch today and i'm wondering if there's anybody live now who might be interested in um yes gregory i was just asking <laughs> but talks. Do you have glute stretches you need to do? You can totally ask questions here. So go ahead and put them through. I am ready to answer them now that I'm done with the um, with the groin stretch. Awesome. I think there's a delay too. So I probably ought to just keep talking until your questions come in. So um, what I'm hoping for this live streams going forward is that you guys will um, will actually communicate with me through the live stream, ask questions, um, and then I can answer them as we go. And then, you know, kind of work it through. Oh, we may have lost him. Oh, too bad. Too bad, because I have so many questions to answer. Let me see. Yeah, I think. Ah, well, anyway, those of you who are watching live too, like that's great. But if you're watching this, like if you're watching it and I'm still live, zoom ahead because that's when you can ask me questions and you can always zoom back and watch the stuff again. You know, if you have a question, just zoom ahead. Yeah. All right. So the past couple of weeks, we've talked a lot about habit building and this is usually where a lot of people drop off. But listen, if you, if I'm just going to talk about it for, you know, a handful more minutes, um, Habit building is crucial if you are going to turn yourself into the person who's flexible. And that's like the most amazing thing is taking that transformation from like, I am somebody who stretches and it, with that mindset, as opposed to I am somebody who should stretch, right? So, oh, Greg, I see your, your challenge. So we'll get back into the habit building in a second. Um, he says stretching before weight training has changed his life for the good. How much time should I take to stretch? You know, resistance stretching is a little bit different than static stretching. So if you're static stretching, you probably, well, static stretching, if you know, is when you take stretch and hold, right? And I would say don't do static stretching before your workout. But if you do static stretching after your workout, probably 20 minutes is fine. Resistance stretching is different because resistance stretching is strength training and the results last uh they don't have to correspond with your weight training so you can use them as a warm-up or cool down of course they're it's great like an amazing way to do your warm-up and cool down and will increase your recovery time so like but you don't have to right you could actually stretch whenever you want and when i'm working out on a regular basis 
um, I actually stretch like once or twice a week. And um, I spend about an hour doing that stretching workout, going through my whole body and problem solving. Uh, my videos online are about um, about 45 minutes long for problem solving. So um, it's worth it to do that extra work because it is strength training in itself. So it kind of replaces like body weight exercises. Basically, it replaces the time that you take to stretch. So that's in itself pretty awesome, in my opinion, because it, it kind of kills two birds with one stone or like seven birds with one stone because it's your recovery. It's your strength training. It's your flexibility, mobility training. It's your relaxation time. It's, you know, like maybe that's four things, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on. It's muscle activation. It's kind of therapeutic. There's like, there's so many things and it can be a totally separate event than your weight training and, um, and cardio workouts. It gives you the same results and will protect your body just the same. Okay. But if you want to do a stretching routine after what I would do is like focusing on legs one day, like if you're doing leg day or an arm day, then also do the leg day stretches. And those would be, I mean, there's eight of them. If you pick your favorites, it would probably take you anywhere from 20 minutes to a half hour, maybe 15 minutes. If you're real fast, um, I would do, cause there's movements. I would do just one repetition, like one set of them. You don't have to go back and repeat them unless you really want to, but one set of stretches and maybe like five to 10 repetitions with minimal resistance. So I know a lot of times in different resistance stretching communities, people are like resist like crazy, but the way that we do it here, you don't need to resist that hard. And actually the science that's out about resistance stretching is that the actual reaction that happens in your muscle, it's just, it's a really funny, it's this little filament binds to a piece of calcium. That's the difference between resistance stretching and static stretching. It's that one thing that happens. And when it does, it stretches this other little filament called Titan, which is like a spring inside of every sarcomere. And your sarcomeres are like the chain links of your muscle fibers. I mean, you have like gazillions of them. And uh, when that chemical reaction happens, when the when the actin binds to the calcium, then the resistance stretch happens. So all you need to do is resist enough that that process happens. If you're relaxed, that process won't happen. So static stretching doesn't give you the same result because static stretching is when you relax and stretch. A resistance stretch will give you that result even with just minimal resistance. So I like to stretch in a way where I'm just resisting enough that I feel like I'm making effort, but not resisting so hard that I feel like I'm working out, right? And it's amazing sometimes when I make big, huge breakthroughs that I will be sore for like two days after stretching. Like I did a calf workout last weekend, last Saturday was calves. And my left leg, I remember in class, I was like, wow, my left calf is really tight. It was sore for two days after amazing and all sorts of cramping and weird stuff as my body realigned and changed and now i feel fantastic no problems isn't that a crazy but that's how it works so i hope that answers your question greg just let me know if um if there's any more that you know just keep asking because i am here it's the whole point to ask questions so feel free to throw those back in and hopefully that was helpful for you but i would say you know what you could do i have some um some videos on my channel and let me see if I can find those for you. I'll put them in the chat. Where is my YouTube channel? Let me get there. I have some, um, some videos that are called stretching for the inflexible and don't let that name deter you because it's actually just, you know, kind of clickbait a little bit, but, um, basically the idea is that you would stretch, um, it kind of takes you through problem solving. So let me see if I can find those. I have a playlist of them and I'll put that link in for you because you could do like, you could just look and see for those, um, look for those lower body stretches on leg day, do those workouts and then do the upper body workouts on your arm days. Right. Let me find those playlists. That's taking a while. Yeah, no problem, Greg. I'm very grateful that you guys are are engaging now. It's kind of my my hope that um, okay, here we go. It's my hope that there's that we can build just a little bit more community because it's um, it's just so important, you know. Where are those videos? I thought I had them as a. I do have them as a playlist. They're just there's a lot of playlists. Let me open this up. 
Oh, technology. One of these days, you guys, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get this technology just right. Searching for the inflexible. Here it is. And let me get that link. And back to you and cut and paste. There we go. Okay. There's that video. It, it's not even a video. That's the playlist. So it has legs and arms and um, it's actually four stretches per video. There's four episodes. So you have eight leg day stretches, which would be, you know, one of the videos. I can't remember which episode is which, but uh, one set of legs, the other set of legs. In that video, I tell you which muscles to use and then... Um, Okay, we're just going to get rid of that. Okay, so what I do is I tell you which which muscles you should feel, like kind of how we did today, how, how that stretch should feel, how to do the stretch. And then there's actually a link in the video that tells you, like, if you don't feel it this way, then click on this link and it'll take you to problem solve. So that's actually a really, really cool part of, of these videos. And especially, like, Facebook is so cool because, you know, they've had those little things called cards up at the top. It's like a little gray thing will come across. And if you click on that, then it takes you to the other video, right? Or sometimes in the corner, there's a little eye. And if you click on the eye, a bunch of videos will come down. And that's what those are. So it'll lead you into the, um, into the problem solving. Yeah, very good. Listen to me. Ugh, trying to get my words out. It's, um, it's a little tricky. I am... Um, off of my antihistamines this week because I'm trying so hard to, um, I'm going to get allergy medication, allergy pills, um, shots, allergy shots, vaccinations. And so I have to be off antihistamines for a week. And I'll tell you guys, I am a mess. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's a big part of my world. Um, fantastic. All right. So I hope that answered your question, Greg, and I hope that, um, Gregory, and I hope that, that those videos help you out. So Go to the, that playlist, um, you know, bookmark that so that you have it. And let me know if you have any other questions. Now, we were talking a bit about building habits. And so you have built up your, I mean, as of this point, because you're here, at least, you've you've admitted to yourself that you are a person who wants to stretch or a person who wants to take care of your body in this way, right? You are someone who stretches. Now, building the habits are really tricky. And one of the best things you can do is kind of like don't break the chain of stretching. Now, I said earlier that you could stretch like once a week, twice a week, and that'd be fine if that's what you decide to do. But also, it's kind of nice to just get into the habit, especially in the beginning of doing a stretch just random every day, just getting into the habit of stretching when you feel like you should. So um, I created a program and it's also on YouTube, um, the intro to it. All you have to do is put in your, uh, your email and you get this program. What happens with this one is that you, let's see, I just copied it. What happens with this one is that you, uh, you put your email in and then every day I send you an email that has a new stretch in it. Each stretch is about two minutes long. And then, and it's a stretch that you can do like in your normal clothes, you can do them at work, you can do them in public. Like it's not like laying down on the floor and doing a hamstring stretch, right? So you're not like in a weird, awkward position. The hamstring stretches are like, put your foot on a chair and lean over, which like you would totally do if you're like talking to somebody at the water cooler or like if you're at a park bench or something, you don't even have to get up and down off the floor. These are easy two minute stretches that you can do. And the reason why I built this program, I mean, first off, I mean, obviously it's a lead magnet. Like I'm trying to get your emails because I want you guys to be part of my world, right? But that all aside, it's two minutes of stretching every day. And what that does is it kind of gives you this permission to stretch when you feel like you should. And it gives you the knowledge to know what to do. So like if you're feeling the back of your shoulder and it hurts, you just do a quick just a quick stretch, pull that tension out and you're done. You go on with your day. If you're feeling hunched over, you do a little this and then you move, you go on with your day. It's no problem. If you're feeling tight in your chest, you go up to the door, stretch it out and, and then you move on with life. What I would love for you guys is to be able to have those moments where you're feeling tight, you're feeling uncomfortable, and then you just go to the wall and stretch or just, you know, do your little thing and go on with life. That's really how people 
take care of their bodies. I mean, it's, it's one of those things, like if you're, you know, people have clean houses, like people who always have clean houses are always cleaning. Like they just, they see a little bit of clutter, they pick it up and they take it to the next room. Like they don't wait until it's like cleaning time to do the dishes. They just do them after they eat. It's a normal thing. You just do it. You just clean. Well, stretching is like cleaning your body. So if you notice that you got a little tension somewhere, you just do a quick stretch. And that's a habit that you build. It's not like something that you, I mean, you are innately born with it, but it's something that we kind of get out of the habit of uh, we don't think it's acceptable to just do a stretch like in the middle of the day, or maybe we just don't have the knowledge to do it, right? So check out that program. Um, I put that link in the caption too. And um, yeah, so you have that. All right. If there are any more questions, throw them in there now. If not, I'm going to go ahead and log off for today and I will see you guys next Saturday. All right. Take care. My time's up. Thanks for yours. Bye-bye. Oh, I don't know how to turn it off. Okay, we might just be live forever. Hold on. Let me find it. There we go. End stream. All right. Bye, friends. See you next week.